Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? It is June 26th, Saturday, June 26th, 8 a.m. Pacific. And you know what that means. Most Saturdays right here on this channel, uh, we will do a live Q&A at 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, it is a video, a session, a time that I look forward to every week because it allows me to go deeper into your questions. Uh, I am still a one-man show. Uh, I still see all of your questions and comments. Uh, I like doing these live streams because it allows us to go deeper because sometimes I just misunderstand the question or maybe I don't understand the subtleties or whatnot. So these weekly sessions that you can count on, uh, we we probably do them, let's be conservative, 45 Saturdays out of a full year, out of a full 52-week year. So you can count on them. There's also a playlist here uh, called, I think it's called Live Streams or Live Q&A, something like that. So if you want to go back and watch the last year or so, there's plenty of content for you there. A couple of quick things. These cards are uh, a lot of fun to send out. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, when you get them, if you want, take a selfie. I've seen some very creative selfies. Please tag me. Please send to me. I'd love to see them. I'd love to celebrate your success. But realize, if you're part of this group, you're part of this community, your individual success can spark someone else to keep going. One of the things that you know if you follow our, my story, you take my course, is the first 30 or 60 days, you know, you're kind of, you're establishing that baseline. And a lot of folks struggle. A lot of folks want it faster. Uh, but by celebrating your story, telling your story of doing the work, uh, getting one of these cards, I'm sure it will encourage others to keep going. So let's, um, you know, let's celebrate your individual success, but let's also encourage others to do the work, right? That's something that I think is important. Uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, I think I'll, I'll do this one first. Uh, yesterday, I put out a reaction video to a housing crisis video. Uh, the reason I felt I needed to do that is several of you uh, saw that video uh, from another creator, and it actually he cut in a picture of me with this uh, book behind me. Uh, I didn't have my voice, didn't have anything, but he he cut me into a rather negative video, um, basically, I don't know. It's a very uh, socialist channel, uh, let's say. Uh, and I can't believe the channel has a million followers. A million. One million followers to preach um, basically hate. Uh, uh, hate of success. Hate of work. Hate of sacrifice. Hate of moving forward. It was, uh, it was a painful video to watch. Certainly didn't enjoy being cut into it. Uh, but... You know, nothing you can do about it. I've, you know, I have thousands of videos out here in the public domain. I've uh, been interviewed on lots of podcasts. So, you know, undoubtedly people are going to use it how they want. So that's why I reacted to it. Uh, I think there are real housing crises going on, but I think, I think we need to address the supply side. Uh, we need to address the uh, abnormally low rates. Uh, being a mom and pop landlord, being a quality mom and pop landlord is awesome. It is not to be demonized. It is not to be, um, not to be taken for granted. It was. It was. I, I can't believe a million folks subscribe to that kind of negative thinking, but it is what it is. So that's why I felt like I had to do it. I did not enjoy that, but uh, it was funny. Um, yeah. So uh, next thing, the really big thing I want to talk about today, and again, remember. I'm here for you. You can in you can leave your questions below. I'd love to go through them. And first off, thank you for the support. Many of you people reached out to me up about that housing crisis video that I was cut into, and um, you're like, "This guy's crazy, right?" And and some of you used very colorful four letter words, which I totally appreciate because I was kind of hot and bothered yesterday. So thank you for the support. But here I want to talk about the housing slowdown. Uh, some of you probably thought I was crazy when I started talking about the housing slowdown, um, when did I first do that? Probably two months ago, kind of started painting the vision of where it's going to come, how it's going to show up more and more every day. In fact, th this morning on the daily financial news, I think I saw three people might've been two, but I think it was three people tell me, you know what? 
it's coming. More listings. Actually saw some price drops. Folks, it's, it's happening right now. It's not a crash. I, I, I really have to watch housing slow down and crash. Lots of people are preaching crash because it gets views. It won't be, it won't, people want it to be like last time. People want it to be a 50% off sale. It's not happening. The structure, the, the domino effect, the, the cascading of pain is just not set up that way. Uh, the debt structure is much better. Real loans, not not liar loans, not uh, not adjustable rate mortgages. You know, toxic debt. It's just not going to get there. But we are, we are going to see a slowdown. So I thought we should talk about what it will look like. This is mainly for my students, but I hope it gives value to anybody doing the work. You have a buy box. It's the first step of my course, right? You have a buy box. What are you What are you looking to buy? Two bedroom, two bath. Single story, two car garage built after 1980. I'm just making this stuff up, but whatever your box is. If you've been in the course for any length of time, you've been looking at it and probably frustrated. You've probably had to add zip codes. You've had to tweak variables because the listings have been so low. We got to a bottom of a million listings in a nation where we usually have three and a half or 3.3 million. So ridiculously low. You've been frustrated. Lo and behold, over the last 30 days, more and more stuff has started to show up. Now, it's showing up and some of it's leaving just as fast, but that's okay. That's how this all starts. Supply comes back. Some of it goes quickly, but some of that supply will stick. So the first thing that you will see in your market or your buy box that says it's really slowing down is simply more listings. Maybe your buy box today has 18 listings in it. Or better yet, maybe a month ago it had 12. Today it has 18. By July 15th, it could have 26, could have 31. That is a sign, an early sign that a slowdown is happening. You got to remember real estate is not stocks. It's not instance. It's not crypto. It's slow. What is happening now is sellers. They think their house is unique. They think their house is special. They want their house to be better than their neighbors. So what you're going to see in an environment like this is listings go up, but the price points that they put them at are what I call stupid. <coughs> now, some of these stupid prices will sell. It's a perfect house, fully remodeled, great location, whatever. But less and less of them as inventory builds will sell. So what you're going to see after listings expand is days on market. And some of you are already seeing it, but days on market is one of those metrics that really doesn't start to move until 30 or 60 days after inventory shows up. This is a cascading thing. Once days on market expands by 25 or 30%, which will happen in many, if not most markets, price drops will become prevalent because some sellers will realize they got a little too greedy. Some sellers will just need to sell. What has been impossible to find the last year is a motivated seller, nearly impossible. But if you're doing the work and you're one of my students, you're likely going to find them. Just this week, we had two examples of students reaching out and saying they found a motivated seller because the listing stuck. I think I did a live stream. I'm going to have to go from memory. Somebody in, I think it was Ohio. They found a condo that had been days on market, 35 days where the average is 15. Uh, I think it was listed for like 81. They offered, or maybe it was 78. I think it was listed for 78. They offered 55. They got told to F off, came back at 60, countered, sat. They came back and he got it for 60. Some sellers need to sell. And it's really hard to find them when the market is screaming higher. When the market plateaus, market rolls over, it becomes easier. And if you do the work, you're going to start to see them. The next one was a gentleman, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, found two houses side by side listed separately. Says, oh, that's odd. Same agent. That's odd. Turns out one seller was willing to do a package deal to sell them at the same time. Folks, if you're doing the work, your list, your buy box, that spreadsheet that I have you build in step one, it's going to start speaking to you. 
it feels odd the first six, 30 or 60 days, but your spreadsheet starts to talk to you. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at that one. It's just a lot to see, a lot to see. So again, so listings will go up, then days on market, then price drops. Uh, then you're going to start to see sellers, some of them, except you know, low prices, uh, like we said in those two earlier examples. What I think may happen in addition to this is we may see a skewing of the median home prices. I'm going to try to draw this real fast. Let's see. It's hard to see here, but let's tr try this. Let's just do this and let's do this. Let's just call this normal. So let's just pretend this is a normal housing market, right? You got the low end here. Where is it? Can you see me? Low end, high end, right? That's a normal market. What's happening today is the market has been skewed, right? Today, the market's skewed. Less low end, more high end. You see that? Right? So the median home price is here. Right? Median is not average. People always mess that up. Median is middle, right? So a normal market, the median price is here. But if this if we're selling more high-end homes and less low end, the median's gonna skew. So I think what will happen when the market normalizes is median home price is gonna fall. People are going to look at that and say housing crash. It's absolutely not a housing crash. Anybody who says the median home price drop of five, seven, eight percent is a crash doesn't understand math. It's just a mix of inventory. Uh, I'm going to go from memory. In the last three or four quarters, homes over a million dollars are up 200 percent, while homes under 200 grand are actually down. That's a skewing of mix. Out of this, and people start listing those lower end homes. Median median could go down, but it is still a healthy market. So, so don't get confused. Median price is not average. Uh, and the last thing, the last thing I want to point out is the housing slowdown is what you and I have been looking for. It is our chance as educated investors to create deals. It is to find motivation. It's to find and know what average is, so we can do great deals. If you're doing the work, the next six to 12 months could be a great time to get your first or next great deal. People are doing it already. If you've been following the daily financial news every day, assuming I get notified, I read off somebody who's done a good or great deal. It's happening now. It's happening at different rates in different states and cities, but it will happen. But you've got to do the work. Make sense? Again, feel free to leave your questions there. I will get to them momentarily. Uh, next up, I do want to remind you, I don't talk about it a lot, but I do have a free course link below. Uh, I thought I would just talk about what is in it. Um, again, the free course gives you a lot of content. I tell my story of Norse Drive. I tell my story of how it all got started. Um, I've added the POC script. We've done some financial data in there. Um, but the, just so we're clear, the free course doesn't offer some key things. I think it's a great thing to test. It's a great thing to play with because again, it's free. What the heck? Who doesn't like free? But it will not give you access to the private Facebook group. I've had a few people ask me that recently. The, the uh, Facebook group is for only people doing the work, building their spreadsheets, talking yield, networking, asking questions. And it doesn't give you the bonus content, right? We have created a tremendous amount of bonus content and more coming. Uh, we've already done creative financing, seller financing. We've done raising private money. Uh, self-management, house hacking. Uh, we got more coming. Matt, the mortgage guy is going to do mortgage 101. Uh, we've got five hours of flipping content coming, which is going to be 15, 18 videos. All of that stuff is in the paid course, how to get started one rental at a time. Uh, so that, and then the last thing I want to say is um, I, I want you to know that I believe in you. I don't think, I don't think enough. I, I, I just, when I saw that housing crisis video yesterday, it, it bothered me. And I just wanted to, to say here on this show that I believe in you. If you want a better financial future, it's absolutely possible. You have to do some basic things, you know, live below your means, get a little uncomfortable, do the work. Um, but with thousands of students now, I know what we teach here works. 
People are changing their financial future. I can't promise financial freedom. I won't ever promise financial freedom. But if you do the work, you can have a better financial future. If you do the work long enough, and that's where most people fall down, long enough, you can have financial freedom. And if you do it long enough from that, you can have legacy wealth. I believe social media does you a disservice. I see too many posts in my feed talking about legacy wealth and flexing this and that. That's not how you get there. You get there by first having a better financial future. And that means taking personal ownership. The thing that bothered me the most about that housing crisis video yesterday was where's the personal ownership? I could probably look at most people's um, checking account or credit card and realize you're not doing the work. What people don't realize is the fact of, that you can buy a rental home means you have sacrificed. Getting on the property ladder is a lot easier as an owner. All you need to do is save 3.5%. If you're going to be an investor, most of the time you have to do 20 or 25%. So if you're going to be an investor and sacrifice 6, 12, 18, 24 months to get a down payment, I want to applaud you. That needs to be celebrated, not demonized. That um, that was very bothersome. So anyways, I, I just want you to know I believe in you. If you're following positivity, uh, the future can be brighter. 30-year money today is awesome. Lock in as many as you can, but make sure they cash flow. No alligators. So yeah, that, uh, as you can tell, that video yesterday got me a little bit. I can't believe a million people follow that garbage. God, so annoying. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is that without question, lending is tightening. Lending is tightening. Uh, I actually think I understand how the dominoes are setting up. So what I think is happening is banks right now, banks today back Realize that the Fed's going to buy anything. It's buying anything. They don't have to make a profit. So the banks got looser. Not crazy loose, but just looser. So lots of loans got done. Now I think what banks are doing is they're going, holy cow. The Fed's going to have to start tapering, tightening, whatever you want to call it, in August. So what we're going to do is we're going to get tight again. Because we're not sure what's really going on and if rates go higher, all of that. So I think what's happening is the Banks are tightening now, owner, OC, and investors, so that when you close a loan in July or August, the quality is even higher. I think that's what's going on right now. And I think that also leads to the fact that rates will be jumping August or September. So again, lock it in now if you can. Um, that's what I think is happening. So again, folks, we're going to go back to the top of your chats. We're going to say hi and good morning and all that good stuff. But if you have questions, leave them. Uh, and if you don't, if we run out of questions, we will just end this session early. Ultimate Bargains, good morning. How are you doing, Jeffrey? Nathan, good morning. Sarn, good morning. Persona, good morning. How are you? <clears throat> Theo, there was no context to your video posted, but I hope you gain followers from those who believe in one rental at a time. Yep, thank you. Yeah, that was it was really odd. Just to, I, It was really odd. Anyways, whatever. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Uh, social interest. Yeah. Yeah. A million people, a million people want to fill their head with negativity. It's, it's crazy. You may be right. Great content. Thank you. Dion, how are you doing? Howdy. Jay, what channel? Uh, I don't even want to mention it. It's, I don't want to give anybody that preaches negativity more followers. Uh, Sean, with lenders tightening requirements, do you see a rise in non-QM loans coming? Uh, yeah, we tried to have this conversation, um, Velocity Mortgage, uh, Steve or Steven, yesterday. I think more people need to have a plan B. I think you should practice that right now. Non-QM lenders in banks, their rates really aren't that much different. They're certainly not crazy like I mean, when I was buying, I could, I, you know, banks were 6% and I was paying 12, 13, 14% for hard money. Non QM lenders today, under seven, some, some under six. So, yeah, I think non QM lenders are going to win. They're more flexible. They're easier to deal with. They're, they're, I, I, I consider non QM lenders like businesses. And what I mean by that is they see what the customer demand is. 
and then they create a program for it. I think banks are, I don't know. They're not businesses, at least not, not that way. They're kind of stuck in the old world. So yeah, I, th I think with banks tightening, I think more people would go non-QM lenders. And then when you start looking at the spreads, the hassle factor, the hassle factor is so much lower with non-QM lenders. Yep. Uh, Prasanna, Fresno Ave inventory, single family condo starting to increase from 200 to 400. Yep. I see it every day. Yep. But five year Ave inventory, 750. Okay. Yep. Oh, when do I think it will hit pre pandemic levels? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, when do I think, again, every state, every city, every MLS will be different. I look at Fresno for 20 years, so let me give an opinion there. It's probably the only one that's worth anything. I don't think Fresno gets back to kind of even, like with 2019 levels, or maybe it was like middle of 2019. Probably till April or May of next year. Realize going from 200 homes to 400, that's a double, right? Going from 400 to 500, that's another 25%. But if you're asking, when do we get back to 750, kind of that balanced market, if you will, it's probably next year. It's probably April of next year, maybe March, March to May. How about that? Let's give a 90 day range, but it'll happen. And it'll happen in, in most cities across the country, just at different times. Everybody likes to talk real estate at a national level. But real estate is hyper local. Even in Fresno, for example, you could have the Fresno County MLS get back in April, for example, but there may be a zip code you like or I like, like the Tower or um, Old Fig Garden. Maybe they come back earlier or later, right? This, this, that's why your buy box is so important. And that's why people that are do, taking my course, they'll change first. And that's that's when you have the power. Uh, can you talk about the impact of higher interest rates and higher median prices? Uh, sure. Um, interest rates are the first thing. So higher interest rates historically, this again is historical, and I've gotten this from the Norris group. I've seen Bruce Norris talk about this a dozen times. You can go back and look at historical national numbers as interest rates go on an uptick. What happens for the first six or nine months of an uptick cycle is demand gets pulled forward as buyers fear being priced out, right? So if we go into an uptick for nine, 12, 15 months, the first six to nine months will likely pull forward demand. I don't know why that theme wouldn't change. Consumers are simple creatures to follow once you track them long enough. So I expect demand to jump short term and then trickle off. Higher median prices. Well, if you follow my story, uh, you know that the number one thing I follow every month is affordability. Higher prices with higher interest rates will hit affordability. And I will be tracking it. Affordability is the number one thing. But realize what you didn't ask in that question, which I also think is going on right now, is incomes. I think incomes are going up. I think wage inflation is real. I do not think it's talked about nearly enough. But wage inflation will help landlords and help owner occupants afford a more expensive home. It's just how the math works. Uh, so that's what I think is coming. And then the other thing, uh, Prasanna, that I, it's not in your question, or I'm sorry, Theo, I skipped Theo. Yeah, Theo's question is, I think banks are getting tighter. I think that will have a bigger impact than any move in eighth or a quarter in interest rates. Banks have the money, banks make the rules. And I think right now banks are getting tighter and uh, that will have an impact. Uh, Steven, uh, do you invest in any notes, pros, cons? I think you interviewed someone before about seller financing. Who was that? Um, I've interviewed lots of people in seller financing. I have done a seller, fin I've been a buyer and a, so I've sold one office building uh, on a seller note. I bought it during the crash, fixed it up, sold it. I'm carrying the note. Um, I bought, 
I think I have two point two million dollars in seller notes where I'm the borrower, right, or the buyer, whatever you want to say. Uh, so I do that any chance I get. I think seller financing is awesome. Uh, I've interviewed many people about seller financing, but I think the person you're talking about is actually an accountant. Where he and I talk about the pros and cons. His name is Bob Langworthy. Uh, those interviews are in my course. They are also on my channel. I I put them there on purpose. So, um, yeah, I think that's who you're talking about. I have interviewed people that actually there was somebody I interviewed a year ago, maybe even 18 months ago that they sold, they did flips, but they sold notes. I think the title of that video, I just watched it again recently was mother of five or something like that. I think mother of five, she flips homes in Texas, but keeps the paper. Uh, I'll have to go look that up. It's been so long ago. Theo, do non-QM still require 20 to 25% down on investment property loans? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I would tell you uh, 25%. They may do, uh, they may allow you to structure it where the seller carries back 5%. Uh, but again, check with your non-QM lender. Yeah, you will have real down payments. Non-QM lenders are businesses of loaning money and they want to make sure they're protected. So absolutely. Non QM lenders will absolutely require a healthy down payment, at least 25%, if not 30. Looking for the video that you had, the scary spreadsheets that you referred to yesterday. You called it the second video when you were talking to the mortgage guy. Scary spreadsheets? Oh. Where's my phone? Let me look that up. So yeah, that was uh, with uh, Steven. You can actually go to, uh, there's a, a playlist called non-QM lenders, I think. It's there. Hold on. One sec. This is the beauty of doing this on my computer and then my phone. So it's called, the video is called Review a Deal. How powerful is leverage versus cash or private money? That was a pretty good video. Yeah, it really showed it really showed the difference between return on investment, how much cash is tied up, all those things. So yeah, that was a that was a pretty good video. Good morning. Rigo, let's see. Uh or sorry, good morning, Polly. And then Rigo, morning. Hope you're well. Yep, I'm doing great. Thanks for your content. I'm from the UK. Cool. And I've been watching uh the US market closely. Awesome. Yeah, the UK market's kind of a microcosm, at least a little bit I've read about the UK. It's been a crazy year, right? There's been a lot of people calling a UK housing crash. Uh, I did a video probably nine months ago saying that, that that's not likely. Um, it looks like the UK market's pretty hot right now. Oops, where are we going? Thank you for your advice. Last week, purchase and sale agreement got extended another two weeks by simply disclosing that the lender process was delayed without over committing EMD. Awesome. See, Roldan, I like it. Hi, Michael. Do you, sh do you, do you share our friends doing deals on what state to see the market moving? Hung, I'm not sure what your question is. Um, Maybe are you asking maybe on these these cards that I have here that share the states? Um, I could. I don't think that's. I don't think I will though, because I want people to stay in their lane. The big problem I have uh, with a lot of newbie investors is they have their buy box and then they hear, oh Ohio, oh Florida, Georgia, oh Texas, oh Michigan, and then they stop looking at their market. Folks, don't get distracted. You're learning a skill. Being a good buy and hold landlord is a skill. Anybody can do it. You just got to be disciplined. You got to look at it. Once you learn the skill, you can take it to any market. But if you only spend a week in one market and you're hopscotching around, you're never going to get there. Um, uh, if you're uh, hung, if you're one of my students and you're in the private Facebook group, most students post their deals as they win. So you can see it there. That's awesome. But I don't think I'm going to say what state they're in when these cards come out. 
At least I don't think so. I'll think about that. Uh, do you see lending requirements loosening once rates go high enough? Uh, well, uh, you didn't give me a time frame there, Sean, so I could kind of cheat. Uh, lending is a cycle. I talked about it in my book here, right? It's the thing that kind of surprised me the most when I looked back and I wrote the book was how, how much lending foreshadowed what happened in the housing market. They're really a delay. So if lending gets so tight, if affordability goes so low, the market will just grind to a halt, right? Less transactions, only must sale will happen. And then, yeah, eventually banks will get looser. When does that happen? Don't know. Next recession? You know, I don't know. It, it generally is not quick. Banks really get into a tightening or a loosening phase for quarters, if not year, year and a half. It's not, they don't flip flop very easily, right? Most banks report earnings quarterly. So they only really look at their portfolio, at least in detail, once a quarter. Uh, so yeah, it will happen eventually. It always does, but I don't know when it's, it's, man, it could be a, it could be a year, year and a half out probably. Stefan, you're welcome. Hey, Chris. MG, I got a letter from my commercial lender that LIBOR expires 6-30-21. I am seven-year fix, third year now, and 30-year amortization. I have a prepay penalty of 30K. Uh, I don't know that. And, and, you know, There's so many other things to think about. How long are you going to hold the property? Are you, would you sell it sometime? If you're going to hold forever, what's the payback period? Um. There's lots of questions in that that I, that's hard to answer. For me, uh, I did, and I think I've shared this. I think I shared it with, uh, I think, the Lumberjack on our Tuesday conversations. It might have been his Friday conversation. But uh, we both uh, went in and refied all of our um, commercial loans. We wanted to push out the term as long as possible. So I paid a prepay on one of my loans. It was only one year. So it wasn't nearly 30K. It was several thousand dollars because I wanted to push the term out. I did not want to re, I did not want variable rates starting next year. Uh, so I did that. Uh, I paid several thousand dollars for the security. I do not know the size of your loan. I mean, 30K seems like a lot, but for all I know, it's a $3 million loan. Don't know. Um, there's a lot of variables, but um, how long are you going to keep it? What's the payback period? How far can you push it? Those are all things that I would think about. But, you know, I spent, I think it was like four grand, maybe 4,500 prepay to, to push out my loan. So that was cool. Yep. Dion Binder. Wayne, you're welcome. How you doing? Rigo, sorry, I probably mentioned it before, but when do you see the interest rates go up and how high do you reckon interest rates will go? Um. So what's the question again? You probably mentioned it before, but when do you see interest rates going up? Well, interest rates have already gone up, so they're already started. Um, you know, uh, for example, um, one of my experts was getting a, a loan the other day. They, they were initially quoted 4%. It then went to four and a quarter. And by the time they locked it up, it was four and a half. So rates are already ticking up. Rates, bank, it's already happening. It's already happening. Um, so I think they've started. I think they'll go up slowly. Uh, I think they go up for quite a while. I think we are unnaturally low. I think banks are telling us, signaling that they are expecting the Fed to taper when the Fed is no longer the buyer of $120 billion in mortgage-backed securities or whatever the number is. Rates have to go up. They just do. Don't know how high, don't know how long. I just know they're going up. Hi, hi uh, older investor here. What do you envision your exit strategy to be as you slow down, de, de can retire, et cetera? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so I envision a couple of things. Um, you know, it, I don't know. I'll pick a year. Assume I'm 70. I think what will happen when, I'm, when we're around that age is um, – we will look at our portfolio. We will identify the top 25%. 
The top 25%, we will make sure are free and clear. We will put into its own separate entity structures uh, and living trusts and all of that stuff and make sure they're easily transferable to our daughter, you know, when we, you know, when we leave this, uh, you know, when we leave this earth. Uh, we will probably take the next 25% and sell them and just take the take the tax hit, right? Enjoy some cash, enjoy the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years of our life, however long it goes. And then the remaining 50%, we will probably sell via seller financing. So we maintain income. So in the end, we will have some assets that we plan to give to our daughter. It's always been our vision. We will have a set that is uh, produces cash so we can go be stupid with our money. Uh, and then we'll have the biggest portion, probably seller financing. So we still have income and we adjust our tax hits that way. So that's the plan as of right now. We've got a couple of decades to figure it out, but that's what I am thinking right now. Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> yep. Roland, you're correct. Yep. Lewis, seven days a week, every week. Yep. Lewis, how do you evict a tenant? I tried turnkey. I, I tried turnkey at 7K, zero success. You use location Temecula, California. Uh, you got to hire a landlord attorney. I've actually interviewed one that's licensed in California. You can search it on my channel. I think I call it landlord attorney. Um, I think, do I have his email? Hold on. Let me see. One sec. Uh, let me look it up this way. One sec. Let's give you a guy's name. Uh, I don't have his number. Ah. I'll try to find his email. If you send me a direct message, uh, I will find his contact info. But you you can't do, um, I don't do evictions myself. No chance, especially in California. Oh my God. I would never do an eviction myself in California. Um, I just, I hire attorneys. They're about a thousand bucks now. Yeah. What's your advice for cash investing? No financing. I'm not sure what that means. What, what's your advice for cash investing? No financing. What's your advice for cash investing? No financing. I'm assuming you're Abdul. I'm assuming you're talking about real estate as opposed to other things. Um, I think cash investing is fine. If you are in a position where maybe you've had some RSUs or sold a company or inheritance or whatever, uh, you can do it. Uh, it doesn't give you any leverage. It doesn't, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's not the fastest way to go, but if that's who you are, right, there's a lot of people that believe in Dave Ramsey and they want to own their assets free and clear. It is certainly a way to go. Uh, in an environment with low interest rates, I don't particularly think it's a great advice, but who cares? If you have the cash and want to go buy an asset free and clear, who am I to argue? Uh, I wouldn't do it, but who cares? If you have the cash, it's absolutely your call and congratulations for having the cash. So go nuts. When do you, uh, in, uh, when do you, when do you, when do you recommend an investor to borrow 15 years or 30 uh, I generally recommend 99% of the time people do 30 years. If you want to pay it off earlier, go ahead. There is one exception. So I, I work in the Silicon Valley. A lot of people that follow me uh, happen to be other software executives, right? That's just the world I came from. So that's a lot of my friends and a lot of my first and second network. A lot of those guys are 50 plus now. They're making a ton of money if they're any good. And sometimes they call me up and go, Hey, I've got four kids or I've got two kids or, you know, whatever. I want to have something put aside for them. And Oh, by the way, I can only do this job for 10 more years. The, the career I came from kills you slowly. It's high stress, high demand, just a sickening life. But if that is who you are and cash flow is not important to you, uh, you still want it, but you, you just don't need it. It wouldn't move the needle for your life. If you're 50 plus 
you can put 50% down and you want to get on a 15 year loan because you're looking at that purchase as an asset for your kids, go nuts. I don't recommend it for most people. Most people are not multi six figure earners. Most people are not consecutive year six figure earners. But if that is you and you only want to do this 10 more years and you want to get out of the rat race because the career is killing you slowly, go nuts. That, yeah, 15 years makes sense, but not for most people. Uh, Josh, why wait until you're 70 to enjoy some of that? Uh, Josh, I'm enjoying some of that now. <laughs> um, I haven't worked since I was 45. My life is awesome. I do what I want, when I want, with whom I want already. Um, so yeah, my life's nothing to complain about now. So we, we are uh, already doing amazing things. Uh, we would just, um, we will start to transition our portfolio in a couple more decades. Yep. We already do everything we want. I mean, we just don't have any crazy wants. Bootstrap. I used to John and he was flawless. Oh yeah. John Caldwell. Yeah. I made that recommendation. Do you have his email? Oh yeah. There's his phone number there. There's John Caldwell's phone number. 559-221-3111. So earlier, uh, who asked about the attorney? Thanks, uh, Ryan. Who asked about the attorney? Uh, Lewis, call 559-221-3111. And uh, um, he is the licensed attorney I use and I recommend for California. I can hit show, right? Yeah, look at that. Awesome. Uh, Lewis, I gave you the number, 559-221-3111, John Caldwell. Tell him uh, Mike Zuber or One Rental at a Time sent him. Yeah. Attorney John Caldwell, look at you. Everybody, yeah, awesome. How long do you see the housing slowdown last? Oh, that's a good question. Again, it's a slowdown, not a crash. It's a plateau. Um I don't know. Um, it'll be different by cities. I think it could be a. I think it could be a year. I, that's about as comfortable as I'm thinking about because again, it's affordability, right? It's a combination of rates, price, and income. I think incomes are going to surprise to the upside. I think prices moderate, and I think rates go up. So I think affordability takes a hit short term, but then turns around as incomes go up. But it's really hard to see right now. We've got to get. We've got to get into the slowdown first. Uh, I was a software engineer, rose to CEO. Oh, wow. And I hated it. Many people said they hated spending too much time away from family. Yeah. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Soft, the software game is, um, man, it's a young, it's a young person game. Oh, God. especially if you hate flying like I do. God, it's terrible. All right. So I think we got through the questions. Um, thank you, Ryan, for putting that out there. I appreciate it. I, I couldn't find it fast enough. I only can find Ryan's or John's private number, which I didn't feel like giving out. So I think I got everyone. Any other questions before we call it? And then, of course, if you're one of my students, I will see you in 15 minutes if you're in the Facebook group. All right. I think I got everybody. All right, everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. Have fun. Uh, do me a favor. If, you've, if you're watching this and you haven't left a review, could you leave that one for me? It's I think we're five away from 600. That would be really cool. And if you could also help this channel get to 20,000 subscribers, that would be awesome. Uh, I think we're about 251 short. So do me a favor, share this channel, share this live stream. Let's have fun. Let's get to 20,000 in 600 reviews. Take care, everyone. Bye.